you've had quite an interesting career. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and your career so far? Thanks for having me, Louise. Um, so it started quite a few years ago. Um, I articled at a mid-tier firm called McPherson and Kelly, and I spent the first part of my career in private practice, uh, eventually becoming a partner in a boutique firm. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed private practice and it gave me the ability to, you know, experience a lot of different areas of law, learn about people, learn about business. Um, it structured the way I thought and I had to get used to, you know, what everybody hates, the time recording, the demanding clients and the time impact on your life because mm -hmm. there's a lot of long hours. But I did that in the initial part of my career and I felt that it benefited me. I then went on maternity leave when I had my first child and came back to three day a week partnership as such, which was quite unusual for the time, but I had very supportive partners and it seemed to work for us. It did make it very difficult though, because in some ways I was part-time, but I had a full-time responsibility as a partner of the firm. Um, however, you know, there was a lot of respect for my position and vice versa, I made sure that I did what I had to do for my obligations to the firm. I did take an extended leave of absence when I decided to have a second child for a variety of reasons. Um, so I did actually stay home and, and I was a, um, a mum for probably three, four years. I enjoyed that immensely because it gave me the opportunity to really get to know my, both my daughters and spend quality time with them. But of course, at the end of it all, I realised that I needed to do something with my mind and to go back into legal practice. I didn't know whether private practice was where I wanted to be, so I decided to be, uh, to sort of participate in the locum world mm -hmm. and took up a locum position. So it was my first locum position, which 15 years later I left. So my first locum position became my first in-house position. Um, and I was at State Trustees for about 15 years, and that's where I really honed in my in-house skills. I loved it. Um, it was a completely different environment to private practice. You are one of the business um, elements and you have to learn that your main client is the company. I was uh, there, as I said, for 15 years and decided that it was time, or some would say, you know, over time, <laughs> to, to change. Um, and I was general counsel at State Trustees at a time when it restructured and it restructured not only internally but also geographically and it moved to Footscray. And I took that opportunity to leave and decide that it was time for another extended leave holiday. Um, so I again did a bit of soul searching, what do I want to do? And I decided that I really wanted again to be in-house but perhaps in an organisation that was a not-for-profit. And I was fortunate enough to find a position at the Law Institute of Victoria, where I've been for about 18 months now. And in many ways, it was a greenfield position. Um, there were many talented lawyers at the Law Institute, and they were all doing bits and pieces of in-house role. Um, and the current CEO had the foresight to, to bring that all together and create an in-house position. So that's where I am now. What? Um from your experiences mm. both in private practice and in-house, what skill sets do lawyers need for, I suppose, a private practice firm and for an in-house position? Essentially the same skills. Um, you have to know your law mm -hmm. and you have to work hard. The difference, I guess, in a private practice is that you have many clients and you may have the opportunity to specialise in a particular area. In-house you have one client and you have stakeholders like the general managers, like the board, um, and they all vie for their business interests. So you have to continually assess 
what is necessary for the company and what is in the best, best interest of the company. As a lawyer, you learn a tool. You learn a tool how to read legislation, how to um, work with the words. Um, but in practice, you have to learn to do all that also negotiating your way with people. Mm -hmm. And that's the big, I think, lesson for, I think, all the young lawyers, especially, is you need to be able to work with people. And I think that applies to whether you are in private practice, in-house. Um, I always find that everybody I talk with mm -hmm. has something to teach me. And I think it's a really important skill to be able to say, I want to talk to you, I want to work with you, mm -hmm. um, I'm different to you, but we can find a middle ground and we can make this work, whatever it is. And I think that applies to both private practice and in-house. When you say you need people skills, mm. how did you learn people skills in your roles? Trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that the some people have more emotional intelligence than others, yeah. so there's a, um, an intuition as to the type of person that you're dealing with. Um, I think we all learn by making mistakes, by rubbing people the wrong way, mm -hmm. not getting the outcomes we want. Um, and I think I did plenty of that. Yeah. But I think at the end, we have to sort of take everybody as they are and we have to work with that person whether we personally think that person is wrong or not, mm -hmm. but we have to think about the outcomes. Yeah. You have two daughters who are also in the legal field. Did you encourage them to go into that profession or was it their own decision? Mm -hmm. They're very independent, intelligent young women and I can't say that I encouraged them. <laughs> they studied um, both arts and law mm -hmm. and they came to the conclusion that they wanted to use law as a tool and they have in their own individual ways paved their legal careers mm -hmm. in different ways to me um, and obviously you know by osmosis they, they absorbed a lot of what I was talking about you know around the table at home um, but I certainly never said, oh, this is what you really need to do. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they both probably started off thinking, this is what I don't want to do. But I think as they got older, as they matured, they realised that they had a knack for words mm -hmm. and a, a knack for understanding, you know, what society needs from a legal perspective and, mm -hmm. and they can see law as a tool for betterment and I think they, they will pave their own way. What, what advice would you give women who are looking to have a family but also practice as a lawyer? Don't look at what anybody else has done. Mm -hmm. Find out what is right for you. Mm -hmm. Don't be hard on yourself. Um, I don't think, there's a lot said about, you know, you can have it all. I, I, I hate that phrase, mm -hmm. you know, you can have it all or you can't have it all. I think what we have to do is we have to work out what suits our family needs. You know, your partner and you have to sit down and work out what is best for you. And there's a financial aspect to that too. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever you decide, the type of parent that you are doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily reflected in the fact that you're, you work or you don't work. Mm -hmm. I think it's really all about quality of time and respect for each other and you know, the child that you do bring into the world. Yeah. Did you, you took a couple of years off. I did. Um, three or four years, mm. I think you said. Mm. Did you find it hard going back? I did. Um, emotionally it's very difficult mm -hmm. uh, because you've set yourself up as a mum first and foremost and, and in some ways you're known as and my daughter's one Stephanie one's Felicia I was known as Stephanie's mum Felicia's mum yeah. Carmelina became a second person mm -hmm. um, so it, 
it is hard to start to think again in terms of yourself first. And that's why I think I, I chose the route of becoming a locum because it was my way of just stepping very softly back into the profession. I think we're very fortunate today though because a lot of organisations have very flexible working arrangements and there is a lot more respect for women and, and, and men because you know some men also choose to want to you know parent their children and I think it's a much easier step back. Um, still will be difficult but it's much easier. And looking back um, into your earlier career what some advice you would give yourself looking back and going back <laughs> back in time yeah um, I think don't worry so much yeah don't make too much of mistakes that you've made and what one person may say or one one situation that may arise because you have to put it into perspective and I think everything that happens happens for a reason and it's an opportunity to learn and to use the learnings in a positive way. Yeah. Hmm. That's, um, it's really valuable advice. You give. Yeah, I, I, I think it would have, um, if I had said that to myself a few years ago, would have saved myself a lot of angst. You know, and I'm, I'm really concerned about people in the profession because you know, we are perfectionists mm -hmm. and so we have these really high expectations of ourselves and I think we've got to be kind to ourselves because otherwise it leads to, you know, anxiety and, and depression and, mm -hmm. you know, we really need to see the signs and, and just take a big deep breath and, and understand that, you know, it's okay, yeah, it's okay to not do things exactly right, you know, and, and move on. What's one um, trick or tip that you give yourself on a daily basis to help you say it's okay if I make mistakes or and to keep basically moving forward? What's one? Um, take a big deep breath and admit your mistake. Yeah. Um, I, I made a mistake the other week and I was embarrassed by it, um, but I, um, I went to the CEO and I said, look, I'm really sorry. I think that I've made a mistake and I'm sorry if it's going to embarrass anyone um, and I'll try and fix it. Um, and so I, I tried to do what I could, um, but I didn't beat myself up about the mistake. It was a mistake, I owned it, and I had to work out how to go, best, go forward with it and turn it into a positive. Mm -hmm. So yeah. taking responsibility and ownership. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Carmelina, thank you so much. The advice you've given is invaluable, so thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for having me.